Peace, 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 brothers and sisters, gods and goddesses, kings and queens. I got a video here that I want to share with y'all. I want to share with you, and I will let you know this here. Before I let you know and give you some insight just a little bit, but let's pay all due respects to the creator. The sun rises. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Our moon. Hotep. Brothers and sisters, I was watching this video today and I, there's a brother, Nick, and he expired me. His name is Brother Pharaoh. Older fella from back in the days. As a matter of fact, he's a lot more older than me. I'm 50 and he's he probably about between the 60s. And for brothers and sisters that's out there, let me tell you something. Based on how you live and how you get your funds or your finances, whatever the case may be, understand the dialogue when I'm about to drop on you watching this clip. I'm a brother, I don't have a time, I have a problem showing other people's work. I love showing other people's work. I'm not, I'm, I don't have time for, oh, I'm too selfish, I gotta do all the speaking. Nah, sometimes other brothers and sisters can drop some science on you, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, however you get there, you get a better definition. So, further ado, Brother Farrell, and I've been watching this brother a lot lately. You know what I'm saying? His inspirations and the things he's saying and how he does it, it really wakens you up. Now, when you're waking yourself up, you're already woken. The question is, are you listening? And this is the title of this post. Are you listening? Part two. It might change the way you view things. So please, Sometimes pay when attention. A black person speaks well and uses proper English. People in the hood are saying, you're talking white. And a lot of people try to refute that and say, that's not talking white, you educate. So I figured out speak on it. So talking white. Let's talk about it. Pay attention clearly. Understand this concept. Don't sit there with an open mind and then close your mind. So, Brother Farrell. You have a black person that speaks well, very well educated, and they'll get around some black people, you know, from the hood or whatever, cousins, relatives, friends. And they'll say, why are you trying to talk white? And I don't think it's a good idea to put down black people that speak proper because we live in a white system. We're not independent. We haven't tried to be independent. And so many of us are very dependent on interfacing in this white system. And to get a job and work in this white system, you have to speak well. You have to conduct yourself in a manner that's fitting for the Europeans. The Europeans have to accept you if you want to do business with them. Now, I'm independent. So fuck all that. I don't, I don't do none of that. But what I want to break down is some people say that speaking proper English is not talking white. And that's a lie. That is very much talking white. Now, let's be clear. The English language is not the original language of the black people that are in America. We had our own language. The English language comes from England. Duh. 
and the British are white. So technically, if you are speaking English, if you are speaking German, if you are speaking French, you are talking white. That is a fact. Now I'm 57 years old. And back in the 60s, when a lot of the blacks, like my parents came from Alabama and came to Chicago, when a lot of blacks migrated to the north, there was a big thing where blacks were, you know, even from my grandmother's generation, they call it trying to pass. And what trying to pass mean is, you know, the lighter skinned people, the lighter skinned blacks could try to act as white as possible, try to stay out the sun. They would say things like close your mouth, pull your lips in so your lips won't be big like that. Get out that sun so you won't be so black. The black people will straighten their hair, trying to speak more like white people. See, and this was called trying to pass. It was trying to be accepted by the person that hated you so much. And I grew up under that. I grew up in a situation where my mother would come home and talk one way and then talk a different way when she went to work. I remember calling my mother at the job sometime and she'd get on the phone, hello, this is Bess. And I'm like, hi mom, uh, can I go outside? She's like, what you want? You know, she'd go right back into her regular black dialect. So she had two ways, my parents had two ways of speaking. One time as a little kid at church, I asked my mother, Mom, why do you keep talking like that? Because I didn't understand why she kept changing the way she talked. But now I got older, I understand she had to do what she had to do to get within the system and to work within the system. And I support that. Do what you got to do to make it in the system. Now, a brother like me, I'll get on Facebook or something like that, and I'll type nigga this, nigga that. And I get a lot of people, they try to insult me. They try to say, I'm a self-hater, blah, blah, boom, 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 boom. I got a video called Black American History. You can go watch that. And I explain about the word nigga. But here's the thing. I think it's a disgrace and a shame, especially for a black conscious person, to be more upset with a black person using words like nigga and breaking down the English language and not using it properly. They're more upset with that then the other fact, they don't even have their own original language. How the fuck a nigga gonna be mad at me for saying nigga when this nigga don't even speak his own dialect? And this nigga ain't even mad over that. He mad over what the fuck I say. And then someone wanna choose which word to use, like the irritated genie. He hates nigga. But then he gets in front of a bunch of black people and he calls our brother Barack Obama faggot, faggot, faggot. All right. How is faggot cool? See what I'm saying? Oh, the irritated genie decides what the fuck we say. No, the irritated genie don't decide a motherfucking thing, especially here in Chirac. That nigga can't tell me what the fuck to say. Nigga, shut your ass up and say what the fuck you say. I want about the fuck I say. That's like me saying, get your bitch ass out the barbershop and grow some motherfucking hair. Stop looking like a pussy ass motherfucking Roman. So we got this big thing going on where black people want to speak proper English as a way to look like intelligent black conscious people as a way to look like they're pro-African. How in the fuck is speaking proper English a good standard for a motherfucking Pan-African. You gotta be motherfucking kidding me. As a matter of fact, when the American, when the, when the pilgrims came here and this country got set up and they were under the British, the British used to walk around, have soldiers walk around, and they used to try to force the citizens in America to speak the king's language better. Because for a lot of you coon ass niggas like Bill Cosby that want to speak this proper white man shit, for your information, no English in America is proper English. They don't talk like that in England. 
So even when you speak what you call proper English, that shit ain't even fucking proper. Now we rebels. We ought to fuck that English language up. I don't never speak that shit right. They call it Ebonics or whatever. But we create our own motherfucking language. I'm not finna speak that shit. And guess why I don't speak that shit? Because I'm motherfucking independent, that's why. I'm something that you pussy ass niggas out there that can't talk like this at work. You you a pussy and you stuck under the white man system. You ain't never got off your black coon negro asses and got together and built no manufacturing, built no agriculture, built no industry where you can go to work and wear your dreads and wear your braids and be black and be Afrocentric and have a job. No. You a bitch ass motherfucker walking around trying to assimilate to a white motherfucker system, talking white talk. You got your sister buying white motherfucking hair from Koreans. Then you got the motherfucking nerve to tell me what the fuck to say? I'll slap the fuck out one of you niggas. Don't ever try to tell me how to motherfucking talk. Go raise your motherfucking children. That's the first thing. Go raise your motherfucking children. Don't be telling no other grown man what the fuck to say. That ain't even acceptable. I'm a grown ass motherfucking man. All you can tell me is don't call you a nigga. And real niggas don't even do that. We call people by what they are. If I walk up to you, I can tell you a Muslim brother. I don't call you no nigga. I call you brother. I say, Asalaamu Alaikum. If I see you a Hebrew, I call you brother. I'll say Shalom. But I'm in Chicago and I'm out on these streets with these niggas. We talk nigga talk. And fuck who don't like it. Because the motherfucker that don't like how we talking ain't gonna do nothing for us. Black people been running around here ass kissing, shoe shining, speaking proper for how long? And Real they still Real killing talk. our motherfucking women and children and shit. They killing a lot of black people that speak proper. They killing a lot of, they beat that black boy up at that school. He come out of body, jumped him and whooped him and beat him up. And he was a college student. So that talking proper ain't dead shit for you. Show me where talking proper and speaking good English has done anything for black people. It's motherfucking 2015 and we more motherfucking fucked up than we was in 19 motherfucking 65. It's 2017, so excuse that video, it's two years old. Hey, when I walked around the 70s, didn't no police fuck with me like they fuck with you new niggas. And don't try to separate it. The sisters with the want to have hair like a white woman, want to put blue contacts in, want to have her hair blonde, want to lighten her skin, want to go get her nose done, want to get her lips done. That goes right along with the trying to speak proper. All that shit go together. All that shit we used to call trying to pass. So let's not fool ourselves. And who was the leader of speaking well in the black community? What entertainer? Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was at the forefront of always trying to tell niggas what to say. Always trying to make us assimilate and do what the boss, what master want us to say. Real talk. When I was young, Bill, we never liked that motherfucker. He went, he went against Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor said, tell Bill Cosby to have a coke and a motherfucking smile. And we was around with Richard Pryor. We never fucked with Bill Cosby. Fuck Bill Cosby. And Bill Cosby is one of the niggas. All you speak, don't say the word nigga, and don't say this, and don't say that. Say the right shit so master won't look at us fucked up. All you bitch ass niggas is just like Bill Cosby. And Bill Cosby wanna come out and say, don't not name your daughter Shaniqua and Rukana and Mohammed and all this shit. But he on TV, his motherfucking name, he Cliff Huxtable. And all you niggas accepted the name he Cliff Huxtable. Not one nigga said, well, damn. Why you couldn't pick a more Afrocentric name? No, y'all accepted that. But as soon as a black man gonna say, nigga, you wanna say, oh, oh, I had one sister tell me, you said, nigga, you're a part of slavery. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Come here and say that shit so I can have my queen jump your ass and beat your motherfucking ass. See? Watch who the fuck you talking to. No, bitch, you the slave. Cause you the one with Afrocentric English speaking bitch. Where the fuck they do that at? 
So you trying to speak the King English right? You ain't gonna bust a motherfucking grape. That's one reason black people ain't gonna get nowhere. You show me an Afrocentric motherfucker that's afraid of the word nigga, and that motherfucker ain't gonna bust that motherfucking gun. That's a fact. That motherfucker ain't gonna bust no gun. The whole idea that we gotta go and we gotta put a certain image out there for white people to like us, that's some bitch shit. They ain't gonna never like your motherfucking ass. Come on. They ain't gonna never fucking like you and speaking well and all that don't mean nothing for you. And Bill Cosby found that out. He did all that cooning. He did all that shit Real to talk. please white folks. Real and talk. As soon as the shit went down, what happened stop. to that nigga? Cut it happens stop. all the time. It happened to cut, Tiger Woods. Cut. They turned on that motherfucker. He was an uppity, well-speaking ass nigga kissing the white man motherfucking ass. Look at that nigga. O.J. Simpson. He was a motherfucker that would say, I shouldn't be saying nigga. All right, brothers and sisters, this got to be a part two on this here because this here, this brother here, Faust, break it down. This clip is two years old, but two years old don't mean nothing. Knowledge is knowledge. Wisdom is wisdom. And I'm Chocolate Almond Ron, and I want to say it's this year. When I was going through, do my, my research and then going through some of these um, clips, and I found, and I've been watching Farrell for a while anyways. So, um, I'm a type of brother, like I said, I listen to all peoples. And if I think your knowledge or your wisdom or whatever you're speaking is um, reasonable to put it out there, because I'm just a messenger. And we know how people's living, and we know how people is being exposed one way or another. And the sad part about it is how people sit back and watch like it's a movie. Like it's literally a movie. Like he was just discussing OJ, Bill Cosby. Tiger Woods, they was exposed, and you sat up and you looked at it. You didn't even ask yourself or thought like, wow, why would they do that to Bill? How come? Some of y'all truly believe that he he might have sex with them women. And if he did, he got to deal with that. But a lot of you sat up there and just, you executed him. But 5, 10, 15 years ago, you all was a Bill Cosby fan. So you understand this here, melanated people, you betray your people quicker than quicker than lightning. Understand the fact that what people try to tell you, then open up your mind, open up your heart, and open up and see what you gotta see. Understand what you gotta make a living. It's understandable, but you ain't gotta sit up there to destroy your own peoples, because in the end, when they wanna destroy you, they're gonna do it. And they showed you, and you sat up there and you went against it. You probably was in a ballroom, you was in a lunchroom, you are in a cafeteria, wherever you was at, and you sat up there and you go, Bill Cosby did it. OJ did it. How many times people tell me, yo, you think OJ did it? No, I ain't think OJ did it. Oh, why not? And they look at you and go, what, excuse me? Nah, I don't think OJ did it. Was I there? No. Was they there? No. But the evidence is too strong. What evidence? He won the case. He beat that. So there's no way in the world you're supposed to be saying, yeah, he did it, he got away with it. You fucking niggas don't even think twice about that. You quick to say that there. Yeah, he did it. Seriously. Sickening. And they want to tell you how to speak, what to say, when to say it. To keep you captured in some kind of mode. Because you were scared to go out and do something for yourself. And make a living. And do whatever you got to do to make a living for yourself. But I will tell you this and I'll say it over and over again. At the end of the day, when you're dying, if you're on your deathbed, something happened to you and you're slowly dying. We're slowly dying now, but really slowing that you know the point that you know is happening. You only had a few ticks to breathe, a few to catch that oxygen before, the, before your deity leaves your body. All things that you think is believed, all things you think you know, will come into non-existence if you don't die quickly or in your sleep your last thoughts will be non-existence because everything you do now is only based on what another group of people is doing to us and you're trying to get along with them and all the money in the world will not save you 
when they're ready to destroy you. This is Chocolate Almond Ra, and this is the message. See you in part three. Part, part three. Peace.